G'day, I'm Mark, this is Self Sufficing Me, and in this video I'm going to explain to you why I chose a Stabycraft for my first boat. Let's get out there. Well, I guess we're not really getting out on the water today, but we are out here in the front yard in the open. And I think for a crossover channel coming from my self-sufficient me, gardening and all that, it's fitting to have a pile, well, a trailer load of cow manure in front of my boat and the boat backed right into our beautiful pecan tree that is actually in fruit and we should have nuts probably in another couple of months but you'll go nuts if i keep on talking about gardening and not about this boat because this is what this channel is about isn't it so we're not out in the water we're here talking about why i got a stabycraft and this talking about maybe sending you nuts i don't want to provoke anyone. I want you to understand that I'm coming from a novice boating point of view. Someone who hasn't really got much experience with boating and have decided that they want one and what type of boat should I get and how did I come to the conclusion that this was the right craft for me and my family. And that perspective is going to probably be different from other people, especially experienced buddies who might be saying, or who might have an opinion completely different. People might hate this type of boat, for example, for some reason, maybe the look or maybe the way it operates on the water, and they may have a really cemented view against it. Others might love this craft because it is a very popular type of boat, and they might immediately agree with me. But regardless, I just want you to understand that I'm not trying to have a go at anyone. I'm not trying to say this is the best boat. I'm not trying to say I have the best opinion. I just want to sort of convey why I came to this conclusion so that perhaps you would understand from yeah, an experienced boating point of view and maybe nod your head or maybe go, mm, I don't know, Mark, and write in the comment section below why you think I maybe should have made a different decision or if you're a novice like me, if you haven't got into boating yet and you're always thinking about it but just don't know where to start, perhaps I've treaded that ground for you and can give you some hints or tips on why I ended up choosing this particular boat. So the model of this boat is an 1850 Fisher. She's nearly six metres long, probably just over five and a half, I think it's 5.6 something metres long. And it's made by Stabycraft, which is a New Zealand company that has been very well known in the boating industry. In fact, they're starting to branch out now all around the world. So they have a good reputation in making boats, but not only making boats, but making safe boats really safe boats with a positive buoyancy. Now, no boat is unsinkable. We know that from the Titanic. You should never say a boat is unsinkable. But Stabycraft have done tests in these boats where they've filled them with water out in a lake or into the sea. They filled them with water and they still haven't sunk. Not only do they not sink very easily, but they don't turn over very easily either. And the reason they can claim such buoyancy when they've filled them with water and haven't been able to sink them is because they have these pontoons around the boat. And this is called an arrow pontoon, but it's a bit like one of those life rafts, except it's an aluminium one, a very well-made aluminium one with some of the best welding you'll ever see on any bit of metal, but inside that, these pontoons create buoyancy itself. This is also 
filled with a foam that not only gives it extra buoyancy, I believe, but it also deadens the sound of the aluminium boat on the water and it makes it quieter. So from my perspective, being a father, having a family, I wanted a boat that was as safe as possible and this definitely caught my eye. The safety side of it, the unsinkability side of it is something I really found persuasive in the reason for choosing this vessel. I'll take you guys through this boat for a walkthrough another time because it's not right I don't think for this video. This is really a why we bought it and I think a walkthrough would probably be more appropriate in a separate video but I'll show you bits and pieces as I'm yakking along but I think yeah you've got safety the unsinkability of it unsinkability all right I'm not saying it's not <laughs> unsinkable but I like that from my perspective being a you know of course I'm not I'm a non boaty I mean the water I've got to be honest it scares me quite a lot I'm not a strong swimmer although I'm a pretty big bloke I swim like a rock um, must be all the muscles you know I think muscles are heavier than fat and I've got a bit of blubber on me and that doesn't seem to help either but that aside the safety aspect was probably the most important and this has got an excellent reputation these boats have an excellent reputation for safety then the second thing was the handling of the boat and I've been told and I've subsequently found out that they're very forgiving and easy to drive. The dealer who I bought this off, Mark Golden from Northside Marine, not sponsored or anything like that, but really good guy, he explained to me that because this is very stable and it sits on the water so well, it is a good boat for a novice who hasn't had much experience in boating to be able to sort of get in and get from A to B in even a fairly rough sea and be able to go pretty well like I've been boating for a while and I found that it's kind of like that. <laughs> there we are we're taking the boat following the dealer doing the on-water handover very exciting. Yeah, we're just cruising along. Where are we heading? We're heading to um, Redcliffe. I think Pelican Point, I think he said it was, where the boat ramp there. I'm not familiar with it, that's why the dealer's taking it. And basically, this is the handover. You follow the dealer, he shows the towing, we're gonna get some fuel, uh, fill the thing up, and then we'll do the handover on the water. He shows us how to put it in the water, shows us on the water, uh, a, all the electronics, everything, the motor, and then uh, basically we go for a bit of a spin and then he buggers off and it's our boat. Yeah. <laughs> now that I have got a boating license, I was using the Tinny for about 18 months, nearly two years without a license. It only had a six horsepower motor, so I didn't need a license for that particular boat. I mean, I had to have it registered and all that, but uh, anyway, I've got my license, of course, and my eldest son has his license as well. We got the license together, which was a really good, fun time. And I'll actually talk about the licensing process in another video as well. Getting your license is one thing. I mean, you do a bit of a test. It's not even as rigid as a car license. You don't need to get a number of hours up. You just have to demonstrate that you can drive a boat at least half decently. The fact is that you really learn on the water and you learn from other people's experience if you can. Otherwise, it's sort of up to you to find your way once you have your boat license and I've found that this boat here I just sort of point it in the direction I want it to go whether I'm going into the sea or following the sea like going against the tide or against waves or the waves are following me whatever the jargon is I'm not sure in my simple speak I haven't had 
any issue at all. I can feel the different conditions and I understand how different conditions can affect boating. But yeah, I've found that I've just had to point, trim my motor as best as I can, although I'm still learning how to best trim the boat in certain waters. So generally I just sort of make sure that the propeller is underneath the water and it's uh, trimmed down mostly and I just sort of hit the tip and away we go. And I already touched on this, but the third reason was the stability. From a novice point of view, I have been on quite a few boats, a um, couple of cruises, <laughs> and, uh, and also fishing boats. And yes, I've been in that little tinny for the last couple of years, and that was quite challenging. In a little tinny, we didn't take it out into the open waters. We stayed in the estuaries and in the passage, and we took it out on a few choppy days. One thing that's difficult in those small tinnies is trying to get some stability, and it's so easy to tip over or fall out of the damn thing. And if you've got a couple of people on it, or three in our case, a couple of big boys and myself, and I'm not small, when you're trying to stand up and trying to fish on one side of the boat or everyone's excited looking at a fish coming up, the instability takes away from the fun. Not only that, me, I'm probably the worst. We do get seasick and I've always easily got motion sickness ever, ever since I was a young fella. So I take seasickness tablets. I wanted a boat that is as stable as possible and apparently these pontoon boats are extremely stable. In the limited time that I've had and taken this boat out so far I've found that it is stable compared to my limited experience in other boats especially my little tinny. It's much more stable than that but I've been out in other fishing boats as well and for us really reasonably small boat i've been really impressed with how well it sits on the water at rest when you've got the anchor down you can have some fairly big chop and some rolly waves and it really does sit nicely so the fourth reason why i decided to buy a stabycraft was the fact that they are really well made and they've got this reputation of having the best welders in boating they are very strict with the type of welders that they employ. They have to do rigid testing to be able to be employed to make these boats. And then you look at the welding, it is actually quite beautiful. You can really appreciate it, the craftsmanship that's gone into making this thing. And this boat is so solid. That's important to me. You're going to pay top dollar for something like this. This here cost me close to 90000 when you hook up all the electrics and got the motor and everything on it. So it's not cheap for a six metre boat. However, when I'm going to do something like this, I like to do it. For me, I think it's definitely worth the money to pay for an imported boat in this case, which I would have been happy to get an Australian boat. And this is where this conjecture might come in. People, especially Australians, will be saying, why didn't you support Australian industry? There are plenty of good Australian boat makers, and there are. There are hundreds of fantastic boat makers all around the world and in Australia and I would have supported an Australian boat maker. It's just that my decision making for all those points that I covered first off and while I'm still going on this other point about build quality and professionalism, I came to the conclusion that Stavicraft was the boat for me and the company to make it for me. Now you don't have to be an expert in boat making to know when you've got a really good quality product. It's like you don't have to be an expert in furniture making to know that you've got a lovely piece of furniture and you, you admire the craftsmanship. So that's the same in this case here. I can tell by going over this boat, and I've been over every square inch, that it's really well made. And the last reason why I wanted to get this 1850 from Stabycraft was the way it looked, or the, the, the model of it. It's as mean as pig shit. I just love the way the boats look. But it's not just that, it's the practicality of it. We live in a hot climate and I love the design. To me it makes sense that you've got this open cabin here for where we are. It lets the wind flow through and it's not just when you're moving. We've had a couple of times already out in the water and this surprised me because I always thought it was windy out on the water. Um, I know some people are going to say, Mark, are you stupid? 
you know, sometimes it's dead flat on the water and you've got no wind at all. Think about sailboats that get, that get stuck and can't move for days on end because there's no wind. Well, I just sort of didn't think about that. And we've been out a few times when it's been very low wind or no wind at all. And I can tell you, that sun beating down can get really stuffy and stifling. But at least with this open cab, you get a little bit of airflow regardless. And I think if I had a one cab that's really contained, like a hard top, for example, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with hard tops, they're great, but I'm just thinking that this is why I chose this boat. I'm thinking that this is a right fit for me and it's not so claustrophobic. Also, I just like for a small boat how much room this particular model has. The beam is 2.3 meters wide. You can sit on the gunnels and I just think it's an excellent design for a small boat, particularly for a fisherman like me and my boys. We like fishing, we're not sort of into water sports that much. The only sport we love is the fishing side of it. Perhaps we might tow a round rubber thing behind it, but I doubt it. We're probably just gonna use this for fishing. And as a fishing boat, with the bait tank in the back and plenty of rod holders and plenty of places to put drinks, a fishing boat, leisure craft, or just something to eat off the back and have a cheese platter on there and just relax and have be stable. This type of design really caught me, really, encapsulated everything that I wanted in a boat. Those are the top five reasons really why I decided as a novice to get the 1850 Fisher. For size, it's easy for me to tow. Now, not that I'm adverse to towing things. I'm an ex trucky I towed tanks behind my army vehicles. So I'm used to heavy machinery and big trailers and all that type of thing. So towing a trailer and backing a trailer isn't a problem for me. But maneuvering it around the backyard and having something too big was a worry for me. But I didn't want to get anything too small either because I wanted to really step up from my tinny. I had enough of a tinny. The tinny was nice to get our teeth into boating, but by jingoes, it was a pain. Uh, it really couldn't do much with it. It's um, just a tad better than fishing from the shore, to be honest. So I wanted to step up, but I didn't want to go too big that it was too hard to handle for the boys and I, or if I decide to go out on my own, or maybe if my eldest, once he gets his car license, decides to take the boat and go on his own, I still wanted something that you could launch by yourself. And so I think it ticks all the boxes, and that's all the reasons. There's probably some more good ones, but I've just done this video off the cuff just what I was thinking off the top of my head. So excuse that, it's not as well thought out. But I think for a first video for this channel, I'm pretty happy with what I've conveyed to you in this vid. So well, let's wrap it up there. Thanks a lot for watching. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. Bye for now.